Hi, I'm Ella, also known as Handmade Millennial, and welcome to the Sew Along video tutorial for ME2076, this Angular Gathered dress for spring 2024. A few features of this dress, it has a very simple basic silhouette with some really elevated, elegant details to it. It has two sides that can be worn either way forward with asymmetrical gathered details. One side is a v-neck with a single line of gathering across the front at a angle. And the second view has two lines of angular gathers to it and it has a scoop neck. Uh, neither side has bust darts, so you can literally flip and reverse the dress as you wear it, however you feel that day, that afternoon, or whatever side you prefer in general. The pattern comes in sizes 6 to 24, but be sure to check the finished garment measurements when you're identifying your size just to make sure that you're choosing the right size for you that has the right amount of ease you like. Some people will want to size down with this pattern in particular because the bust is fairly, uh, is fits a little bit closer, but the waist and the hip are very free flowing and have a lot of room. So the bust is the only measurement that you really, really need to focus on when choosing your size because there's so much room in the other two locations. So keep that in mind primarily as you look at that. Some suggested fabrics for this pattern include anything light to medium weight that has a lot of drape to it, or at least those are the fabrics that I intended, but Honestly, have fun with it. A couple things to keep in mind as you do think about fabrics are that this dress's gathers are fairly dense. So a fabric, a heavier medium weight fabric, the gathers may be a little bit poofier than a lighter version of the fabric. And also because the pattern has anywhere from three to four yards of fabric, that dress may also get a little bit heavy. So things to keep in mind as well. I prefer anything with rayon or viscose blends. Rayon chalet could be really nice. Tensile fabrics, tensile satin blends, lightweight linen could be an interesting choice. Cotton lawns that have a lot of drape could also be really nice. Um, and also any silk blend fabric. So a silk chiffon, a silk crepe de chine is really lovely. With these two versions of the dress on the cover, the shorter version is from a silk crepe de chine and the longer version is from a tensile satin. And the version, the fabric that I'm going to use on the version that you will see today is also a silk crepe de chine from Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics in Berkeley, California. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind when it does come to fabric, especially as we look at using fairly lightweight fabrics, is making sure that that fabric is not too sheer for your uses here. So you don't want the dress to be too see-through. So some things to keep in mind or to check for that would be to put your hand behind the fabric and see how much of your hand you can see through, or to even hold it up to the sunlight and see how much you can see through the fabric and just to be able to gauge like how comfortable you are with the sheer to opaqueness level of that fabric. This pattern is beginner friendly. I think it could sew up in an afternoon or possibly a couple sessions, depending on how quickly you sew. Some of the things that you're going to learn with this pattern are how to use facings, how to do inseam pockets if you prefer, or if you'd like things to be really quick and more simple completely. So you can also skip the pockets and just sew the seams straight. That is your choice. Um, we're also going to learn how to do a narrow hem, which is a really elegant, beautiful finish for the hem of a dress, especially in a lightweight fabric. And we're going to learn how to gather. So I hope that you have a ton of fun with the options that this dress presents. In terms of ways that you can hack it, some things that come to mind for me in particular would be obviously different lengths to the dress. You could go even shorter for a really mini or a my day length, somewhere in between, that's easy to do. I also would love to see it in different versions of sleeves. So if you have other McCall's or Simplicity or Know Me sewing patterns, any, especially for tops and dresses that have kind of a similar bodice structure, any of those sleeves should be able to interchange. You should be able to put those interchangeably on this dress 
relatively easily. So I'd love to see it personally. I'm going to make it in a long bishop sleeve version. It could be really good in a short puffy sleeve or a flutter sleeve. If you prefer a little bit of sleeve coverage or want to find other ways to shake up this dress, I would love to see it with some different sleeve options. The pattern comes in sizes 6 to 24, so that would be bust, suggested bust 30 inches to bust 46 inches, but I think you could even probably fit maybe like two sizes more than that. Maybe a bust 50 inch would still fit depending on how much ease that person prefers. So when in doubt, make a muslin, but you could probably get away with it. Other notions you're gonna want for this pattern include single fold bias tape, enough for two armholes worth. That's about half of a yard. You're also going to need a little bit of interfacing for the facings of the dress, so minimal amount of interfacing. For the dresses I'm making today, I actually am using a fairly sheer fabric, and I'm going to show you how to sew this dress as it is intended with the instructions straight out of the packet with the bias, um, double the single fold bias tape and the facings. However, for the final version of the dress, I am going to take those out and insert a full lining for the dress. So this pattern is fairly beginner friendly. So I think someone who's done a couple smaller sewing projects could be able to figure out how to do this dress and have a lot of success, especially with the help of this sew along video. So have fun with the process. Take it slow, enjoy it. I hope you love this dress. Tag me if you make the dress and you love it. I'd love to see it. The hashtag is ME2076 and I am Handmade Millennial. So I hope you love this dress and enjoy it. So there are 10 pattern pieces that you're going to need for this pattern. Number one is pattern piece one, the upper front. Pattern piece two is the lower left front. It's one of the skirt pieces. Make sure to mark the notches and the pocket markings. Pattern piece three is the lower right front in the short or the long view. Just one of those. Pattern piece four is the upper right back. You will want a single one of the upper right back. Pattern piece five is the upper left back. You'll want one of these. Pattern piece six is the lower right back. You'll want one lower right back. Pattern piece seven is the lower left back. And you need one lower left back. Please. Pattern piece eight is the pocket. You're going to want four pocket pieces reflecting each other like that. Pattern piece nine is the front facing. You're going to want one of these in the main fabric and one in inner facing. And pattern piece 10 is the back facing. You'll want one in the fabric and one in inner facing as well. Okay, the first step is actually a step that's not included in the instructions. This is an optional first step for you that will make things a little bit easier later. We're gonna do some lines of stay stitching on the front and back bodice pieces. So within the seam allowance, the seam allowance for this pattern is five eighths of an inch. So within that, we're going to run a single line of normal stitching kind of close to the edge along the neck edges of both of these pieces as well as the armhole edges. And that's to prevent the pattern pieces from stretching. I'm going to do that on the front and back pattern pieces of all of these. So I'll also run a line of stay stitching through this deep V and on the armholes of this pattern piece as well to prevent things from stretching. Right, once we've stay stitched the neckline and the armholes of the front and back pieces, that's three pieces, we're going to put those aside. And the first thing we're going to do is identify the lower right front and lower left front skirt pieces. So you'll notice that all of the skirt pieces actually look really similar. So one of the things that I did as I cut them out is in the lower left corner of each 
piece, I took some fabric marker and I labeled L, L, F, L, R, F, lower left front, lower right front, etc. on all four pieces so I knew which piece was up, what direction it went, and all of that. So that's a handy tip for you. So I'm finding the edge where the two right and left front skirt pieces are the same length and where they also have two matching notches. And it's the side that does not have the pocket markings because this is the center front piece. So the first thing we're going to do is take right sides together and match that center front of the lower left skirt together, right there. So I'm gonna pin it and then stitch it. So this version of the dress is using a silk crepe de chine fabric. And one of the things you're gonna notice me doing with this dress is using both a walking foot and also tissue paper underneath the fabric to keep it from wrinkling, from getting out of place, because silk fabric tends to shift a lot. So if you're using any sort of really lightweight fabric, you'll notice that um, you may have issues with the seams getting kind of wonky. And the best way to prevent that from being an issue is to put some tissue to stabilize it under the fabric. So I'm just using some scrap tissue from another pattern with um, some pieces that I knew I was never going to need. I'm just cutting myself some strips that I can use for the rest of this dress project. You can also use like spare uh, gift tissue paper. I usually save tissue paper when I receive a gift that's wrapped up for this exact purpose. So I don't have to cut a spare pattern, but whatever you got around. And then we're going to sew this seam, the center front seam at a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you're also using tissue for your delicate fabrics like me, afterwards all you do is simply hold the fabric secure and put the tissue off. Gently without pulling out the stitching. You can do one side, of, one side at a time or both sides. It's an added step that's really helpful in adding stability to the seams with delicate fabrics. All right, the next step is that you're going to finish the edges of that center front seam and then press it open. I press that really nice and flat. These two skirt pieces I had cut on the selvage, so they're not gonna fray. I don't need to finish them, but you may wanna finish yours. Now we have this long continuous lower front piece. And the next thing we're going to do, this is the top edge that has the angle and the bottom edge should be straight hem, was we're going to sew three lines of stitching, of basting stitches along the top edge between the notches. This is one edge, you can see that notch there. All the way across that piece we just sewed, there's another notched edge and we're going to sew three lines of basting right next to each other and within the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. One, two, three, within that 5 eighths, in between the two notches all the way across the front continuously and that's what we're going to be using to be able to baste these stitches at the end. So. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to switch this to a basting stitch, which is about a four. That's a good one. And then starting 
at where the notch is, past the notch. We're gonna start that, the first line of stitching, of basting stitching in there. With my tissue stabilize, stabilizer, of course. If you're not using a really delicate fabric like a silk crepe de chine, you don't need this. And I'm gonna stop my line of stitching right at that second notch on the other side. And cut it. All right, so that is what my basting stitch looks like. Now we're gonna do two more rows of that right next to each other, but not crossing each other. And there are my three rows of basting stitches within the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, next we're going to take that upper front piece and then take our front skirt as well. And make sure you grab it so that you've got the angles correct with the taller gathered part of the skirt here and the shorter piece here. And we're going to gather these, gather the skirt so that it fits within the boundaries of, oops, excuse me, so that it fits within this portion of the top in between these two notches here and here, and we're gonna make the skirt just gather it until it fits within there. So to do that, I'm going to pull through one of each of the three gathering stitches. So I have three stitches in my hand from one side of the gathering. Just going to pull those and start to gather. And you'll notice I have a little bit of tissue left on my skirt. I'm gonna pull that out as much as I can, but then some of it's being a little difficult, so I'm just gonna wash the dress after and let that kind of just fall apart. So I'm gonna pull this and keep pulling, keep gathering. Pulling off some of that tissue as I go. Now you'll see we've gathered that and we're just going to get it so that this length of skirt is the same length as the width of this bottom angle. So I've gathered a little too tight. I'm gonna reduce some of this. And it may look a little puffy to you depending on how thick your fabric is. I wanna reassure you that even if it looks like a lot, um, after a wash and letting the fabric kind of relax together can be really helpful. The gathers may look a little less poofy after they've been washed and allowed to just rest a bit. I'm gonna loosen this up a little bit. And then eventually when I'm ready, I'm gonna pin these two pieces so that they're right sides together. Just gonna work to distribute these gathers fairly evenly. basting stitch these two pieces together so we can check and verify that the gathers are really even before we stitch it on for good. Do your best to start to get it really even. Took me a while but I think these gathers look pretty even and I'm going to go ahead and run a basting stitch all the way across from the very edge of the fabric all the way across the entire front. And I'm gonna run this stitch just underneath the edge of the gathers at that 5 eighths of an inch so that all of the gathering is in the seam allowance. I 
as I'm sewing, I'm just kind of pulling the skirt smooth, making sure there's no weird bumps or anything in the gathers. Continuing to kind of gently guide the fabric. All right, so now that we've got the front ready to go, I want you to go ahead and just take a look on the other side and check how the gathers are looking, if they look fairly consistent, if they're even, if you had any pleats. This looks pretty good to me. You'll notice the design also intentionally leaves a little bit of um, space at the edges so that it's not gathered all the way to the seams. That will make things lie a little flatter in the final dress. So once you feel good about that, on the wrong side, I want you to press the gathers upwards on the seam and give those a good pressing upwards on both sides. And then you're also able to go ahead and finish this top seam here with an overlock or a zigzag or whatever type of seam finish you prefer. This is the time to do that on this piece. And if you have any basting stitches still visible from this side, go ahead and remove those basting stitches as well. And then after you've done that, our next step is with the back left and right separately. We're going to take our back left piece here. There's the armhole, that's the neckline. This is the center back. And I'm going to find the lower left back skirt panel. This one goes something like that. And then just like we did with the other skirt panels, essentially what we're gonna do here is run three lines of gathering in between the two notches, three lines of gathering on the skirt panel so that we can gather that up into this bodice panel in the same manner. Got the upper left back to the lower left back, stitched together, right sides together, with the basting stitches and the gathers done evenly. And then we're just going to baste these two together, check the gathers, and then stitch them together. gathers look fairly even and consistent so I'm going to rip off the tissue and then stitch that with a normal stitch now in the same place. Back down from a 4 for a basting stitch to a standard 2.5. Next we'll take the upper right back piece here and we're going to do the same as we did on the other side with the lower right back skirt. We're going to take this skirt piece and do three lines of, of gathering stitches, basting stitches in between these two notches. And then we're going to gather it and attach it to the upper right back skirt piece. We're gonna take those two right and left sides, align them, and now we're gonna stitch them together along the center front. So right sides together. We're gonna pin this in place and then take it to the machine and stitch it down. Matching the notches. All right, now that the right and left 
are stitched together. It should look a little something like this. And we're going to take the front and the back and stitch them together just at the shoulders. So right sides together, pin and stitch at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on both. Next up, after the shoulder seams are stitched, we're gonna take our facing pieces and apply your interfacing to your facing pieces that you should have already cut out. Just go ahead and do that on both of these pieces and then you can also finish just the outside edge and the shoulder seam edge of the facing as well. I'm not going to interface this version because in this silk crepe de chine, the uh, interfacing I think would be a little bit too strong, so I'm gonna leave it uninterfaced. But after you interface and finish the outside edge of the seams of the facing, you're going to just stitch these two facing pieces together. Take those to the machine and stitch both of those at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, we've got that facing all finished up. Go ahead and press these seams with the seam allowance to one side or open your choice. And then we're going to grab our dress with the right side upwards. We're going to attach the facing to the dress now by connecting the V to V, connecting the shoulder seams, right sides together. And one other tip I have for you as we're sewing the deep V of this facing here is actually to mark out where the intersection will go for the V. So let's go ahead and take a little look here and mark out five eighths of an inch, five eighths of an inch from both sides. This will just help us get a really sharp, crisp, V shape. Because this stitching here is really, really important to get that line nice and sharp. Oops. Okay, now you can see here where the stitch line will go. Wow, that looks really sloppy, but you get the idea that we're going to stitch, pivot, and continue on. And you'll notice that this distance to here is more than 5 eighths of an inch, and that is why we bother to mark the stitch line, because a good V comes to a little bit lower of a point here. So now I'm going to pin this in place and then we'll take it to the machine and stitch it. You'll observe here, we're gonna come down to the tip of the V that we had marked. Move that out of the way. Stop at the very tip. Lift just the presser foot. Pivot. Make sure everything is smooth, no wrinkles. Put the presser 
Press your foot down and carry on stitching along the line that we've marked. your facing sewn in. We'll take a little time to carefully iron the facing over to the inside of the garment. So I'll just iron it open at first. Take that kind of gently around and fold it all the way to the inside. And iron that in place. You can run a little bit top stitching along just, you know, maybe a fourth or an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric, holding the main fabric and the facing in place. You can do that all the way around the facing. You also, if you'd like, if your facing isn't staying down well from there, you can tack a couple stitches with your sewing machine or a hand stitch. Just a little stitch here, another one at the other shoulder seams, and then perhaps at the tip of the V and the rounded side here, just to hold that facing in place. If you really don't like facings, the other option you have is to fully line the bodice, so, or the dress all together, that's up to you. The other thing we're gonna do here to get this V at the front neck edge to lie flat, this is the front V, or it could be the back, is that we're gonna clip along that straight line right up until about fourth of an inch or so, a little more than this, away from the neck edge. And that will help it lie flat when we turn this to the inside. You'll see that that V now runs nice and smoothly when it wouldn't really rotate before. Next, we're going to install the inseam pockets. So I'm opening up the dress right now with the right sides up. And you'll see that we've got some of our pocket markings here. These little dots and a notch in the middle. So we're gonna take all four of our pocket pieces. And first things first, if you would like to finish the edges of the pockets, you should actually do that now around all four edges. Go ahead and and finish the seams of the pockets actually before we get started. I'm gonna give mine a quick pinking. Okay, now that we have finished the edges of our pocket bags, we're going to take the skirt piece right side up and a pocket piece also, um, I mean, right sides together actually, so wrong side up. And we're going to match both the dots on the pockets and the notch you'll see on the pockets to those locations on the skirt. And we're gonna pin all four of the pockets to the front of the skirt pieces. Now with those pieces matched.
And then what we're going to do is to stitch these pocket bags onto the main part of the dress, only in between the two dots. Stitch from here, from this dot, all the way to this dot. Starting not from the edge of the pocket, but from that dot. And stopping right here at the dot again. Back stitching. Next, you're going to press this open with the seam allowance like that. Give it a little press, and then we're gonna understitch this in place. So I'm just gonna press this real quick. All right, we gave that a quick iron. Now what I'm going to do with the pocket bag now opened this direction, we're gonna understitch this pocket bag in place, meaning that I'm going to, on the pocket bag side of the seam, do a line of stitching about a quarter of an inch away from, um, to the right of the, um, maybe not, to, yeah, to the right of the line of stitching on the pocket bag side. And that is just going to help keep the bag inside, the pocket bag inside the dress when we're wearing it instead of rolling outwards. And once again, only stitching in between the two dots for that understitching. So that's called an understitch and that's gonna hold the pocket bag in place. Now do those two steps for all four pockets and then come back to me when you're done. All right, our second to last step is to connect the side seams with the inseam pockets. So we're going to take the two side seams and align them right sides together. And I should show you what that understitched pocket looks like again. We're gonna align our two side seams and pin along the sides from the bottom of the hem all the way to the dot of the pocket bag around the circumference of the pocket and then up to the armhole. And then we're gonna stitch that line. I'll show you how that goes. mention that there are some notches at the bottom of the pocket that you'll want to align as well. This is what it looks like at the bottom edges of the pocket here. You'll see the pocket bag is within the seam allowance of the dress enclosed by the dress. The pocket bags are inside there folded. Okay, as I mentioned, we're gonna start stitching this seam from the bottom of the armhole. We're gonna go down, we're gonna hit that dot where the pocket is. We're going to then um, put the needle down, lift the presser foot, pivot and stitch, not down the side seam to close off the pocket, but actually around the pocket bag to the second dot pivot again and continue downwards. As I shared earlier, we're gonna stitch all the way down to this dot here in the pocket bag. We're gonna leave the needle in, lift the presser foot now. Then we're going to pivot the fabric. So that this is an angle. Put the presser foot back down. And then continue stitching. I'm 
gonna keep stitching around the pocket bag until I hit my little dot there. And then leaving my needle in the dot, lift the presser foot, pivot the fabric around, and continuing down, finishing my straight seam. And then after you finish that line of stitching and you've got your side seams finished, go ahead and take those seams and finish both of those side seams. Give it a nice clean finish. And then the last step we've got is to do a narrow hem on the bottom of, oh, two more steps actually, is to do the narrow hem on the bottom of the skirt. And then we're gonna bias bind the armholes. To do bias binding on the armholes, you're going to need double fold bias tape. That means that it not only just folds in half, but then it opens and folds one more time. In general, I actually really, really, really strongly recommend you make your own bias tape, but you can also buy the commercial bias tape available at stores, um, which can also just save you a little bit of time. So both are options. Um, when in doubt, I think using a bias tape from the actual fabric is always kind of a really nice, beautiful touch. But this time, I, in the purposes of this dress, I am also going to use store-bought bias tape. So, first things first, we've got our armhole. This is the right side outwards. We are going to start at the bottom of the armhole, kind of in the armpit. And if you haven't pressed your side seam that we just stitched and finished, please press it to the side. We're gonna start pinning this around with right sides together of the bias tape. I'm gonna leave about an inch past the seam. All right, once we've reached the end here, I'm going to cut a little bit of overlap between these two and cut this about right there. And then I'm going to stitch along this first fold all the way around. One of the things that you can do that would be really helpful for this is if your machine has a free arm, like mine does, so that you can sew circular things and little cuffs, it's a good idea to take that free arm off. I'm going to stick this on here and go ahead and sew in the round along that first fold. And then I'm gonna come back when we're at the end here and show you how to close off and join the two pieces of bias tape. Close to the end here, give about an inch, back stitch, and this is what my armhole looks like. I'm just gonna go ahead and I can see the fabric ends here. I'm going to stitch just right, barely connecting the two pieces of bias tape, just barely, barely to the right of where the fabric disconnects and unfold this. Unfold that all the way and then stitch across to connect the bias tape together. cut some of that excess off. And there 
there we go. I'm now going to stitch, open this up, and stitch all the way across so that the bias tape is now fully connected to the armhole. All right. Next up, there's our armhole. We're gonna iron this away, iron the bias tape away from the dress. And then eventually we're gonna fold it once, fold it twice and have it under and stitch all the way around. But for now we're gonna iron it. Last step when it comes to binding, by binding the armholes. This is what our armhole looks like from the right side. And this is the wrong side. And we are just going to go ahead and stitch that bias binding in place. As you go, just very gently guiding the fabric in place, continuing to lift your presser foot. Right along the edge here on the innermost edge of the bias binding is where you're gonna be stitching. And there we have it, a beautifully bias bound armhole. Give that a good press and that's what that looks like. Now you're all set. It's one of my favorite ways to bind armholes. All right, so we are almost finished with our dress. The last step here is to hem the dress. And you have a few options here. The pattern calls for a narrow hem. This is something I really recommend for really lightweight, drapey fabrics. It's a very small, delicate hem that looks really, really nice on light fabrics. For medium weight or thicker fabrics, you may wanna just do a traditional hem where you fold up once and then twice and stitch around. So to sew a narrow hem, the first thing we're going to do is to sew a little edge guide, kind of, along the bottom of the fabric. So we're going to do um, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more than a quarter of an inch, away from the edge of the fabric, all the way around. Next step is to fold that, or to iron that fold up towards the wrong side of the hem using that stitch line as our fold line. Now that we have this little hem folded over, we're gonna sew about a quarter of an inch away from the edge here, all the way around. Now you should have a hem that looks something like this with the fold to the wrong side. And then we're going to just go ahead and trim away some of that excess as about as much as you can all the way around. And then what we'll do is iron that fold back one more time and then stitch around one more time. 
All right, I took that to the iron after cutting it and folded this over, trying to keep the edge still pretty narrow. And then we're gonna go ahead and stitch that down from the wrong side. And there you go, that is what a narrow rolled hem or a narrow hem looks like. It's a really beautiful fine finish that works really well for light or thin fabrics in particular. Thank you for making ME 2076. I hope you love it and enjoy.